So we, we successfully deployed, we successfully deployed uh, to AWS. And the next thing to do is to do something with AWS Batch. Um, yeah, let's think about that for a little bit. We have some code that already does a bit of this. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, so, hmm. So like, it, so we, we definitely have code that does some of this, right? Um, mostly it shells out to FFmpeg um, and then waits for FFmpeg to complete or reads um, from it or pipes it to other command line tools. And we can reuse that code um, specifically for the metadata code is a little bit more interesting because we're parsing the response. I guess in the case of uh, opening a whisper, we're also parsing the response. And, uh, yeah, I think it outputs as JSON and we parse that and do something with it. So we'll probably do something like that. Um, you know, some of this could just be a shell script. Um, things that I'm thinking about right now. So the whole point of having the step function that trigger is triggered by a file being uploaded is that then uh, what we can do is we can define in the step function what steps we want to do. And it's much easier to have like um, uh, what am I trying to say? It's much easier to have uh, conditional logic and error handling on this also all those sorts of things and then connect to various different AWS services. Uh, so how do we want to go about doing this? Let's um, think about that. I think at least for right now, this is going to be a fairly simple step function. Let's go over into the AWS console and kind of like mock out or like sketch out what it's going to be, what it's going to do. Uh, so if we go over to, I guess we just go to create. There we go. And let's just create a, a blank one. Uh, and we have our little designer. It's gotten a lot better than it was when the service first became avail available a few years ago. Um, and So we're going to submit a job to AWS batch. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the details right now. I just want to kind of like lock in what the, the workflow is. And, and this should be relatively, relatively simple, I think. So we're going to um, put item. So this submit job, we want to wait for the task to complete. I guess the question is, what's going to make the most sense? Um, I think one of the benefits of using a step function here and triggering it when the object is uploaded is, is specifically that when, um, if I want to change how that works, I don't want the, the, the integration there doesn't have to be changed. Right. Whatever I want to do, whatever steps I want to perform, I can do within the step function and then um, change it later without having to change the um, event trigger on the S3 bucket um, or any of that. I guess another way of doing that would have been, uh, and I think we saw briefly, there's two options on properties here in the, in the S3 bucket. So there's event notifications, right? So here's where we are. We're running this Lambda function when an object is created, but you can also turn on uh, notifications to event bridge for elements in the bucket. And
And that would allow you to like then create rules in event bridge to listen to certain kinds of events. And then if you create multiple rules listening for the same kind of event, you can um, and have tie the logic on that way. And that would also be an option. Maybe we should consider that. You know, thinking of you know what I want to do uh, in the short term is I want to run an AWS AWS batch job. And if you're not familiar with batch, batch is a um, a, uh, a a batch processing service where you give it a a job queue, and you can define jobs. And jobs are defined in terms of a container, right? So you you give it a container image. Let's like create a job. Here we go. So we can use Fargate as our, what we're running our code on or EC2 or EKS, so Kubernetes, right? And they recommend using Fargate for most scenarios um, because you can provision your container much more quickly there. Right, rather than submitting up in the EC2 instance. Um, you don't know, have to worry about the specifics of instance type. So that can be a pro and a con. So I think my concern there is that if I want to do things that are going to use GPU, um, is that even an option if I'm using Fargate? I think maybe not. like uh, CPU architecture, but we can't uh, leverage uh, GPU, right? So on the other hand, if I do this, I haven't done this thing yet. There you go. We recommend to use Amazon EC2 if your jobs require a GPU. I don't think we need to run simple jobs that spin multiple EC2 instances. Um, and so we would be able to select that specified instance type here. Hold on, just test. So we specify the image that's going to run for the job definition. And here we go. So that here for this job, we can say, here's the number of vCPUs, here's the amount of memory and the number of GPUs to reserve for the container. Interesting. So I assume that if I had selected Fargate, that this option wouldn't be here that out I've not used I've, I've used batch before but not where I wanted to take advantage of like GPU here so let's just quickly run through um, I don't have any execution rules all oh, right for the CSH that's why we didn't have to have this or the other step. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take its word for it. Very annoying that I can't just click the link to go back. Uh, and the reason we're not using something like Lambda for the pro for, for this work, right? So, and again, what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is we're trying to do, we want to extract the audio track um, from the video and use that to um, do speech text transcription and to do silence detection. And um, yeah, let's think about that. Because it, it's it's something where it's going to, going to make a lot of sense for this code that's going to do this work to 
to itself um, store all this output, right? Because it needs to store uh, the audio track into S3 somewhere. Um, why? Well, because this job is not going to do the uh, speech to text. One of the things that I, I've seen as a problem is that we, the current process that I have running locally, it does piecemeal, like one audio track at a time, um, like from the 20 minute video segment, it does piecemeal uh, speech to text. And so it doesn't have the context from the previous recordings and that can throw things off a bit. Um, so I think that what I will want to do is have a separate process that will have access to all of the audio output and do transcription and analysis across the whole thing, rather than it be part of this process where we're just looking at one 20 minute video file at a time. Um, so I do want to save the audio output separately. Um, and then we're also going to be generating these images that also need to be stored in S3. And we're going to be extracting this metadata that we want to store in DynamoDB, um, along with like uh, the S3 keys for where all this stuff is being uh, saved. So how should this work? Because I'm, I'm having doubts now about kind of the, the approach that I set out with of using a step function here, um, just because the step function is honestly not going to be doing a lot. Um, for instance, like, okay, we submit a job and we can wait for the job to complete here. Um, but if we look at batch, I don't know that we would get, like we wouldn't, would not necessarily be able to get the result of the job from here, which is maybe something we would use to put the item into DynamoDB. I think that um, isn't something necessarily we'd be able to do. And I'm also thinking that potentially this is something where if I were to change this up and use bridge that would make it a lot easier to hook multiple things up to these object creation notifications and that would uh, let me do something else in the future like okay actually there's a bunch of things we do want to do uh, when the video is uploaded and we can do that to the step function maybe does it really matter? I think I think it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, Change of plans. What we're gonna do is we are going to take this bucket and we are going to well, what options do we have here? How do we hook on to how do we turn on events? <laughs> Copilot generating a comment. This is the important part. Ridiculous. Uh, let's see. I guess the other question is, does what we have in Pulumi make it easy to uh, set up these events? Because if not, maybe that's a, a reason not to pursue this approach, even though that is a little bit simpler.
have event. It's not looking good. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll just do it this way anyway. Bucket notification. Uh, manages S3 bucket notification configuration. Single notification con uh, notification configuration resource. Uh -huh. So that's to SQS and SNS. Lambda. Trigger multiple Lambda functions. And making different functions and then bucket notification. SQS. Do they have something about event bridge? There we go. Bucket notification, bucket, event bridge. Okay. So we can do that. Like so. Um, and then. Then what do we do? Well, uh, I want to create a container, uh, Docker container, uh, to run the process and tasks. And that. Ooh, what is AWS X ECS Fargate service? Well, it's the wrong thing. For one thing. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think somewhere I left myself a note. Uh, because I found some docs about provisioning, uh, about building images for Docker. So I'm going to try that out next. Um, well, let's let's do this. So uh, create a event bridge to trigger uh, event rule to trigger uh, our Then create an AWS batch to process the video, sure. Uh, AWS batch job definition. Oh, that's fun. I mean, we wouldn't do that. Uh, let's do this. Let's say to do. Is just JSON. It's job definition. It's not. It's not actual property. What are the actual properties? Yeah. Uh, ECS properties, EKS properties, platform capabilities. The options here. It is a Pulumi input, a Pulumi input, a Pulumi input array. Uh, okay. Huh. Very odd. Comma. Where would we? We're gonna come back to this. Let's look at batch job definition. So I'm trying to figure out is how to say yeah resource requirements. That's what I want to say. How to say that this is gonna need a GPU? Uh, there we go. Probably want more CPU than that as well. But GPU value one. Doesn't exist. Uh, oh, it's in container properties. I see, I see. T 
container properties, JSON stringify command, resource requirements, volumes, environment mount points, limits. We'll have to see what we uh, need to adjust there. Image is supposed to be inside of okay good. image and command we're not going to specify and should be good and ec2 i saw was the default so we'll just remove this um this stuff i think i would prefer to be at the top that feels kind of nicer there we go okay so we have this batch job definition um we're also going to need um Yes, um, batch uh, compute environment. This is the environment that the job will run in, and that's fine. How about let's, let's see if we can find a, a good example here. And we also need a job queue. Yeah, so it's a, a very long example here of. Visioning uh, a compute environment. Instance role, instance type, uh, placement group, subnet. So, like all the things we need to do to provision EC2 instance. Um, I don't know that I would want to create a separate VPC for this. We could probably just use the default VPC. It's a little thing, right? Amongst others. Side, yeah, I think if we look at Fargate, that's much simpler. Right. For a computer environment, because we don't have to worry about like an EC2 instance you should use in those things. Um, so for the sake of being able to see, well, that's fun. That their example down here refers to a thing that's right up there. Um, I was thinking it would be kind of fun to just use something that I know is not going to work and we can come and refine it later to kind of just make forward progress. Let's try this, let's try this out. So again, this is not gonna work, but uh, so we need sample AWS security uh, group. Oh, that's fine. So this is definitely something that I would want to put into a, uh, a whatchamacallit, <laughs> a component resource to just organize everything together. But um, you know, for the sake of just putting some things together. Service role is the role that allows AWS Batch to make calls to other AWS services. So it needs to be assumable by Batch. And uh, is this just a typo in their docs that this should be this? Sorry, this should be 
this? I think so. Okay. So then, uh, we need a we need a cue as well, right? We have sample item is match Q. Um, type is not. It's pretty close. Uh, let's see. Environment orders, job statement, actions. We can give it a name. Um, tags, timeout, scheduling policy, ARN. Uh, just ignore all that. <laughs> okay. So now we have the groundwork for a thing. Right, so it, it's not going to do anything yet. We're missing things. Um, we're, we're saying things that don't make any sense, but just in terms of like getting everything hooked together to kind of like put it, put the boxes out there, and then we'll fill them in. Right. So if we want to create an event rule, we need an event rule. Um, this is the wrong event rule, though. We don't want to. Schedule. We want something that's going to listen to an event from S3 from our bucket. Put object. This might be right. Let's um. Let me see here. What would this look like? I think you know what could be really helpful. It's an event bridge. Uh, looking at rules, we can create a rule. And uh, yeah, we're just going to test rule with a, a pattern. We're going to look for an AWS event and we're looking for S3. So AWS API call via cloud trail is not what we're doing. We're looking for object created. And uh, source is AWS S3. Detail type is object created. So in the past, there wasn't a way to um, directly emit event bridge, previously called cloud trail event or cloud watch events. Now it's event bridge. There wasn't a way directly to directly create those events from S3. But what you could do is you could use cloud trail, which is another service, to monitor activity on S3 bucket. And then it would create events that you could monitor for. So that's where this is coming from. But now we can directly listen for object created. Um, and we want to also look at does detail have an event source? No. no, that's a cloud trail thing. Does it have an event name? No, because we have detail type or object created. Um, and then Detail has bucket and then name. Bucket and then name. Is ID what we're looking for? I don't know, maybe. Um, so now we have this thing that's going to listen for an event. So, we get a target for the event rule. Um, and the target is going to be, that's, that's, I don't think that's right. Uh, okay, get out of here. Uh, so, we want to provide a batch target. And let's take a look at this. So job name is just an arbitrary name give to the job that we're going to trigger. Uh, job queue is not the right thing. We want to pass. Uh, I guess that's it. Are we missing something here? Type rule batch target is not assignable. Property RN is missing. Interesting. Arn. What's RN here? Of the target. Oh, okay. The ARN or name of the job definition to use if the event target is an AWS batch job. This job definition must already exist, whereas ARN is the ARN of the target. Oh, 
we have both. Options here that we might want to pass. Input path and input transformer, potentially. All right, so this is a JSON path that's used for extracting part of the match in event and passing it to the target. Um, so this would allow us to pluck out something out of the event to pass to this. Or I think we can just leave this as is and this will pass the whole event from event bridge um, to the job somehow. How would that work? Let's let's just pretend here. Uh, oh, let's uh, get simple event, a pattern, I'll look for S3. For um, Amazon S3 event notification, specifically object created uh, on a specific bucket. Now, a question you might ask if you're not kind of already indoctrinated into the whole infrastructure as code thing is like, I'm doing all this stuff in the console, what do I need to write it as code? Well, the answer is, is that in real life, not me playing with stuff on stream, um, I would want to do this multiple times, right? I would want to create, potentially I would want to create this over and over and over again, like spinning up test environments for automated testing, provisioning accounts um, with resources for people to, to use for manual testing, um, for demo environments and all sorts of things, and then eventually in production, and um, not only is it annoying to repeat yourself over and over again, uh, it's also very error prone. Uh, so having it all as code means that um, we can just use kind of just normal coding practices, uh, code reviews, and uh, testing at that level to make sure that we are deploying the things we need to do. So, if I want to target a batch job queue. Hey, dang newbie. Good morning. How are you doing? Sounds uh, from your remotes. It seems you are <laughs> at the movie theater where, where I am the movie. Uh, so if we were targeting a batch job queue, job queue, job definition, job name. And this looks familiar from what we're seeing in Lumen. Uh, lazy Sunday, so good, nice, nice. Waiting for football and last day of PTO laziness. Hmm. Yes, I am, I'm looking forward to, to my PTO that I'll be taking. I, uh, I traditionally, <laughs> the last several years, uh, have been taking off from Thanksgiving through New Year's. Uh, just got to get through the rest of the year to get to Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, okay, an execution role, and there are some additional settings here. Uh, okay, so I think the R in here needs to be the Q. job definition is this, and the job name is just the name we give it. Uh, so this is not going to work, <laughs> but um, let's preview what it would do. Yeah, I have Euro vacation that has 20 PTOs a year with no carryover. So I'm already off December 17th to 31st, I see, I see. Um,
yeah, my my employer is is closed uh, anyway from uh, we got an error from Christmas through New Year's, so it's it's hard to you know uh, not try to stack some time off against that as well. Okay. Resource sample has a problem. Expected cider block to contain a valid network value. Expected. I have a typo. Uh, oh, I see. That should be a zero as well. Not a one. That's not how you do a cider. That's not how you do a cider at all. Can we select the default VPC and just use that? Do I want to? Does it matter? I guess it doesn't matter. Let me just correct my cider. I was intending. Yeah. In terms of errors, that was not the one I was expecting, but expecting some other other ones. Alright, yes. Okay. So, uh, one thing is the bucket notification can't be deleted because it's protected. like the I think maybe because the I don't have version control on this file so but I'm pretty sure that it was just inheriting the protection of the, the overall bucket definition and that's why that was protected also we don't need to import this anymore we're not using, we're not using that um, resource so if I preview now, what's the error? Probably one or two more things that we need to unprotect. Yeah, the event subscription also needs to be uh, unprotected. That was that wasn't the subscription. That was the lambda permission tied to the subscription. Okay, now the subscription. We do want to protect the bucket, just not all the stuff that's hooked onto it. Uh, if at some point in the future I do decide, hey, I want to um, use the step function to be triggered by objects being uploaded to this S3 bucket, I can still hook on to the event, right? And I can st I can just create another uh, event bridge rule. Uh, uh, sorry, event target. Um, the targets uh, a step function. Okay, so the change here is going to be we're creating a bunch of resources that we just defined up here. Um, that's not going to work. Uh, we remove these uh, on object created things. And we remove all the step function stuff. And here's the bucket notification we also have added. The nice thing about this is this then decouples kind of our, so we had a S3 bucket notification that was inside of the bucket. It was auto generated because of the, the values we passed as input. Uh, so that will like, now that this is separate, this won't be kind of lumped in with the protectedness uh, of the S3 bucket, which is probably good. So um, I could just deploy this, but we should probably, let's do this. Let's make this simpler for now. And we're gonna comment out this part where we need GPU. Um, and let's go ahead and make an image which is the, the thing I was going to do before I got sidetracked with all this, figuring out how to set up the batch. So I think everything else here technically will, it'll be okay. <laughs> uh, but we do need a Docker image and there's a package in Volumi uh, for managing building uh, Docker images 
and pushing them in, into ECR as part of the, the build process. I, I don't know that this is always going to be the thing that I want to do, but for right now, for like just bundling um, stuff <laughs> for the infrastructure, we can do this. Uh, let's just use it. Huh? The latest release. Okay. Uh, install. It seems like uh, the way that we're doing this is we have the Pulumi things that we're importing into uh, things as uh, dependencies, not dev dependencies. Uh, and then, so the way they do this is they create an ECR repository um, and then they grab auth token for the ECR repository. And then that auth token is probably passed to Docker build image. Uh, it's another bot. Bye bot. All right. Where is auth token being used? Ah, here we go. Uh, so I probably just want to do, I just I want to copy the whole thing I think well we'll sneak this down here um, I think you know long term as I'm thinking about like actually building docker images um, that contain like the application code and shipping them um, managing them all that sort of stuff that's not necessarily something that I would want to do in Pulumi. Probably what I would want to do is have, um, I'm already paying for GitHub, so just use GitHub Actions to build the images um, and push them to ECR since that's where they need to be anyway. Uh, and then parameterize the infrastructure as code to be like, here is where these Docker images and what tags to use. Um, I'm not, it's an, an open question is how do we like, if we do, uh, Pulumi up, how do we parameterize those things in a way that's manageable? It's, it's an open question. Um, okay. So I am going to just dump all the stuff I cut or copied into here. It needs to be above the part where we need to refer to the um, the image, right? Uh, and okay, so we have an ECR repository. We have that. We're creating an image. Uh, the context, uh, the location of the context for doing Docker builds. It's not going to be app. Uh, we're going to call this um, video ingestion. I guess I could call it video processing. Sure. Create folder called video processing. Underscores or dashes. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. 
Um, build a multi-platform image manifest for ARM and AMD. Do I care about that? Why would I care about that? Hmm. Uh, I'll just leave it for now and see what happens. And then for image, we want to refer to the image that we just created. Image name is not the right property. Let's try again. Uh, host context, docker, exec, labels, id, ref. If the image was pushed to any registries, then this will contain a single fully qualified tag, including the builds digest. If the image had tags, but was not exported, this will take on a value of one of those tags. This will be empty if the image had no exports and no tags. Oh, no. is that really what I want? Or to ref for the pushed images so we can deploy it. Maybe that that's what I want. We're, we're gonna we're gonna see. We're gonna see. We'll go. So and right now we're just saying, hey, if we're gonna queue up this job, it's gonna have one vCPU and a gig of memory. Um, and it's gonna run the, run this container uh, on Fargate. Um, eventually we're gonna shift this over to use EC2, uh, so we can have GPU and we'll use instance type instance type that has GPU. Uh, right now, we just want something. Uh, and then in video processing, we're gonna make a Docker file. Uh, and so, simple Docker file. That. Yeah, it could install FFmpeg and do all that stuff. We're just gonna echo uh, hello world. The container is run. Now let's see what Copilot gives for us. I really like the, I mean, I think a lot of people like doing the chat function uh, with these AI tools. Um, and typically that will be, that will give a more immediate result like here where it's thinking. Um, but I've had pretty good results with just like kind of this comment driven uh, way of doing it. And I usually end up with good comments as well, right? Uh, unfortunately, this seems to be a little confused. Uh, what base image do I want to use for this? What base image are we using for our other project? File, consent. Uh, I mean, we're probably using the, the Rust base image, aren't we? That could be fine. So in glowing telegram, hold on, I guess. File, oh, file, open recent, uh, glowing telegram. There we go. <laughs> so we have Docker file that rust, uh, thanks to brainless. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah, so we're using that. Eventually, we're gonna like bring this over, but just for now, I mean, honestly, it, it, it matters so little. Um, I guess I'm using Debian. There we go. Can we just do that? Um, So I guess the question is going to be, right? How do we get information, right? So we have this event pattern. Uh, we have this event coming in from S3 and it contains the details about the object that was created. How do we get that into um, the argument uh, passed to the, the So 
input here. Download JSON text, pass to the target. Looks, so I think this is what we want. <laughs> uh, no, we don't want some static thing. We, what we want to do, it'd be nice if there was a link to the docs. I'm so used to that from like the cloud development kit. Uh, okay, so how does this work? How do we parameterize the um, message we pass? reacts to events yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, event patterns event buses there we go here's a doc on AWS batch jobs is event bridge targets yeah, yeah. so how would I pass information from inside of the event to the job Additional settings, configure target input. Okay, let's go back to here. Were there additional settings? There were additional settings. Configure target input. You can customize the text from an event before event bridge passes the event to the target of a rule. Input transformer. Okay, so if we look at a sample event, right, and then we Specify this. Okay, but how does that what does it mean to be passed to the target? Help me out here. Ah, passing event information. Using the input transform. Target input transformer. So we're plucking things out of the event, right? Event has a detail, and then there would be job ID and status, I guess. And then a template. What's the status? Okay. And how does this become an input to the how did how does the container receive that message? What is listening for? Like, okay, this this is a nice detailed set of instructions, but where's the part that explains how it works? This is a tutorial listening for. Okay, sending simple notification alerts. No, no. no. I have I have actually done this before, um, but when I did, it was in the context of a thing where I didn't care about the event because it was a scheduled event. So we're gonna take a break though, and I'm gonna be back. But be, uh, the, the, I'm gonna be back in a couple of minutes, uh, and we're gonna figure this out. Yes, you can get clone this. Uh, it is. In fact, an open source project. It is nothing, honestly, you, you would really want to use right now. 